thank you for. Oops. All right, thank you for joining us um, this afternoon. So my name is Adrian Shoemaker. I'm a teacher of the visually impaired orientation mobility specialist in the New Hampshire APH Scholar who does work for the Department of Ed. And today we're going to talk about it's an introduction to assistive technology to support students who are blind and visually impaired. So starting with kind of what the assistive technology is for our students. So oh wait, let me go back. Students who are blind or visually impaired have unique challenges. The assistive technology enables access to environments and tasks while enhancing and broadening a student's ability to engage in the general curriculum. So the school team must consider each student individually to determine what assistive technology will best support the student. So per IDA, the procuring and maintaining of any assistive technology device is the responsibility of the school um, at no cost to the student's family and must be, be provided to the student at no cost. So some of the definition of assistive technology device, um, again, per IDEA, is any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially, off the shelf, modified or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of an infant, toddler, or a child with a disability. And so what we'll end up going through today is talking about the different, some different levels and giving examples of low tech items. So those are ones that are readily available, inexpensive. They typically don't require batteries or electricity. Then there's gonna be some mid tech items. So devices that are usually digital and may require batteries or another power source. And then we'll cover some high tech items. So those are devices that are typically computer-based. They're likely to have sophisticated features and can be tailored to the specific needs of an individual student. Um, we'll also go over some places where we can obtain some of these devices that I'll be sharing with you. So one of the first places is through the American Printing House for the Blind. Uh, so students who meet the definition of blindness, function at the definition of blindness, or meet IDEA's definition of visual impairment can be registered on the American Printing House for the Blind federal, federal quote account. So these students are eligible to receive products from the American Printing House for the Blind through the New Hampshire Department of Education Accessible Educational Materials. Some of the other products that I'll share today are ones that you can borrow through AT and NH, which is assistive technology in New Hampshire. So the Institute on Disability is the lead agency for New Hampshire's statewide Assistive Technology Act program. Uh, the program has two major activity areas. So the first is being training, education, and outreach. And then the second is the assistive technology services, equipment demonstrations, and loans and refurbishing and reuse. So I included the atforall.com website there. Um, and if we have time at the end, we can I can go over and show you a little bit about that website as well. So we'll kind of start with some low-tech uh, devices first here are low-tech materials. So we have adaptive paper. So all of these papers were from the American Printing House for the Blind. So first you have some just bold line writing paper. The second image shows bold line graph paper and also um, just raised line graph paper. So students who um, don't have any vision might benefit from or would benefit from the raised line graph paper. And then I've also worked with students who the lines make them dizzy. So that would be another use if a student's vision or is bothered by all the lines, um, just using the tactile graph paper can be really helpful. And then the third image there shows how you can use different tactile materials to actually aid in the graphing. Um, so you can use like sticky back foam to place in the pieces. You can use just art tape. So different types of materials to make those graphs tactile. Another one would just be a bold line marker. So those 2020 style contrast pens, um, those can be purchased through Maxi Aids or through Amazon and then just colored Sharpies. Go into tactile graphics. So APH has a tactile graphic image library where graphics can be embossed out. Um, and they'll also show the braille on them. So that's the first image. The second image is from a page in this 
Science Tactile Graphics Kit. So through APH, there's a basic science, earth and life graphic package. There's a tactile anatomy atlas, and then one on health education. And then there's graphics that as TVIs, we end up making all the time for our students um, in conjunction with them. So this last image just shows a teacher student created one. So there's different textures. You can use, you know, puff paint, foamies, anything that'll stick onto something and make it bump up. Um, there's arrows with labels that could be in, you know, the dark line, dark ink, um, braille could be placed over it using the stickers. Okay. And then going into some more maybe mid-tech items would be a handheld magnifier. So this kit is available through AT and NH. So this could be borrowed. Um, so the kit comes with, um, it's a magnifying kit that has lights and there's different powers ranging from 3X up till 12X. And then we go into video magnifiers. So the first three are the Video Mag HD, the Juno and the Jupiter. Those are available through the American Printing House for the Blind um, with federal quota funds. So the Video Mag HD is a handheld video magnifier. Uh, the Juno, it has just a near and a distance camera that can be adjusted. Um, in the contrast, the colors can be changed. And then we have a Jupiter, which is the larger of the three that has a more powerful distance camera and that can be adjusted to for both near and distance viewing. And then on the bottom here, we have the MagnaLink S and the Acrobat HD Mini. Those two devices are available for loan through um, the AT and NH. So those would be something that you could trial with a student, with a family, with yourself. Um, so those are two examples of ones that could be also trialed. There's light boxes. So some of our students benefit from backlighting. So on the slide, there's an image of a little girl um, up at a light box and she there's different colors of red, yellow, and blue dots. And you can she's interacting very closely with that. The second image just shows the light box itself. It's on a vertical angle that can be adjusted based on the student's need. And then the third shows an example probably doing color matching. So there's a red apple and then a little red cube and a yellow banana and a yellow cube that are underneath that. And when the light box is on, that would all be illuminated. A lot of times in our classes, we'll use um, the iOS device and some apps. So on this slide, there's an image of an iPad. And just uh, there's a lot of apps that are helpful for our students, just a few um, that I want to talk about today were the Dolphin Easy Reader app. So that's one that you can read and access Bookshare books. There's a Braille Buzz app, which is available through AP. All of three of these apps are free. Um, a Braille Buzz app, which is available through APH. Um, and then the Seeing AI app is another one that's free that can do short text. It can do longer documents. It can describe a scene, color, money. So lots of great uses for uh, the iPad and some of those apps. Something else that's available through AT and NH is a large screen Chromebook. So they have a 15.6 inch display that's touch screen that can be borrowed to trial with some students. Um, and then we also can use a computer, students could also have a computer ordered for them, not through AT and NH, but through the district or some other funding sources. So on the, both the Chromebook, um, the Chromebook and the computer, things that can be adjusted with built-in accessibility would be the text size, the contrast, the mouse pointer size, the text cursor, and then the magnifier itself. There's an option for full screen, a docked view, or a lens view. And then if the student needs a more powerful um, program, Zoom text is able to be ordered through the American Printing House for the Blind for a Student License. I'm going to talk about screen readers here. So the screen readers, the, uh, it reads aloud all the content that's on the screen. So for the Macs or iOS devices, it would be voiceover. For Chromebooks, you have Chromebox. For the Windows-based, um, you have Narrator. And then NVDA is a free and open source screen reader. 
And then again, if something more powerful is needed, then there's the draw screen reader, reader which is also available for students through federal quota funds. So Bookshare um, and electronic books. So Bookshare is free for uh, students with a qualifying print disability. And many of our students, if all of our students with visual impairments would qualify for the Bookshare eBooks. So they're able to listen to the books with a high quality audio. They can see the text and follow along with word level highlighting if they have vision. Um, they can adjust the reading speed, the font and the color. They can adjust the font size. And then they can also pair it with a device and read it in braille if they're unable to access it visually. Um, you can get trade books, textbooks. So that's an incredible resource for our students and our families. We go into some large print keyboards. So the two examples of the keyboards on the left, one on top of the other, there's a large keyboard that has the, um, the numpad attached. And then there's a smaller one underneath it. That So you have the yellow background with black letters and then the smaller one below it has black background with white letters. Um, it's important to kind of determine what our students see best when we're going with a large print keyboard. Um, and then, so you can buy an external keyboard or a Bluetooth tooth keyboard to pair with their devices. Or I found another way that's uh, really easy is to just modify an existing keyboard that they might be using. So with that, you can order the black background with white letters, white background with black letters, or yellow background with the black letters to just stick over whatever keyboard they have, either they're using a Chromebook at school or, or if there's another Bluetooth keyboard that they might have um, in district that is paired with their iPad. We have an abacus, so that's a manual calculating tool for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And then we get into some other adaptive calculators. The two that are shown here um, one's a talking calculator, and one is just one that has large keys, and both of those were available uh, through Maxi Aids. We have large print and braille rulers. So there, these three are from the American Printing House for the Blind. So we have the large print braille toss away rulers. In the middle, there's a flexible ruler that has both large print and braille on it. And then at the end, there's a um, one foot braille ruler, and there is also a slide. So for accuracy and measuring, be used. Then we have tools with audio supports. So there's a talking thermometer, a talking scale, their talking measuring tapes exist. So um, any task that a student needs to complete, either in a math class or a science class, chances are there's some type of talking tool that they could be using as well. We have a slate and stylus. So the slate and stylus, it's a small mechanical device used for writing braille by hand. So pictured here is the small slate that's going over a notebook. And then you have the stylus to punch the dots for the braille. And then we get into braille writers. So there we have the light touch Perkins Brailler is shown on the left. And then the APH smart braillers on the right. So that one has um, auditory feedback. And then there's also the large print SIM Braille that shows up as well for beginning Braille students. Braille embossers. For the, um, so the embossers are gonna be the machine that prints the Braille characters onto paper using raised dots to create tactile dots that can be read by touch. The embosser works by electronically translating text from a computer or other device into Braille and then creating the raised dots on the paper or other medium using a mechanical mechanism that presses into the paper to create the dots. So on this picture, on this page, uh, slide, we have um, an embosser for text, and then we also have the tactile Pix Blaster. We have refreshable Braille displays. So the Chameleon 20 and is one that's available through APH. And then the Mantis Q40 is a refreshable Braille display that has both the Braille and the QWERTY keyboard. Then we have the Brailliant BI40X um, and the Focus 40 Blue. 
So those are two other examples of refreshable braille displays that could pair with a computer, um, with an iPad, and the braille, the, the dots would pop up and the student would be able to access their materials in braille connected through the Bluetooth or through the cord. And then we get into braille note takers. So those are portable devices that can be used as a word processor to take notes, record and organize information. In addition, they often have features that provide a calendar, phone book, internet, email, and they run on a Windows-based operating system. So they feed information back by speech output or a braille display. So there's two examples, the braille note touch from humanware and the braille sense six from hymns. They're just two examples of note takers. And then on this last page, I just listed a few. There's, you know, if you start to look, there's many websites, but the ones that I tend to go to the most for ordering would be, you know, Amazon. If you can find almost everything on Amazon and it comes really quick. Um, and then the American Printing House for the Blind and Maxi Aids are the three of the materials that I shared today. And now just into questions. Does anybody have any questions. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody again. All right. Questions, anybody? I, Adrian, I had never seen that, uh, the note taker, the one that was on the left on that slide, which looked like it kind of was almost like a touch device in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it um, has. And so that's like a little computer. I mean, that's full on yeah, I had never seen that. Right, with the screen. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. That's really what what does something like that cost about? I'm not gonna hold you to it. I'm just, uh, the, just the general probably between five and six. Okay. Thousands, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Anybody else? Any other thoughts, questions? It's a good overview of, of yeah. low to high. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Adrian. I was like, I'm over here smiling. I have my camera off. Good thing my camera was off. I'm just over here smiling away. I'm like, low to high. Love it. Low tech, simple, all the way to high. Mm -hmm. I used to work with a lady who was blind, and she always had a slate and a stylus in her pack in her pocketbook. And uh, we would travel for work together. And anytime we would go to a restaurant that didn't have a braille menu, she would take her menu and she would take the slate out and she would braille it as she sat there. Really? And she, and then she would hand it back to them and say, congrats, you now have an accessible menu. <laughs> um, and she, that was her own little, her one woman revolution to create accessibility throughout. Which I always That's thought was great. really funny. <laughs> oh, I have a question. Um, mm. You said that the uh, New Hampshire for or tech. I, I know I've borrowed their devices. You said they do trainings. Um, I haven't been on their website lately. What kinds of trainings do they do? So I think if there was something specific that we wanted, like we've um, done in past years, like if we wanted training on the iPad, I think, I think they'd be willing to do whatever we kind of wanted. So if there was something specific, okay. like we used to do some of those make and takes. We did, um, one where we just going over the iPad apps that they had yeah. on some of their devices. But yeah, if there's something specific you want, I'm sure they would be willing okay. to do it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's always, it, it's always great to ask Amy, just ask them because, you know, part of the, one of the core services they're going to do is, is to be able to demonstrate different technology tools to you. So even if you don't even know what you need, you have a general idea of what you need, but not what's out there, ask them. They might have those things and be able to show you the different things and how they compare to each other. Okay. Amy, are there other go-to um, websites that you order from? I was trying to think about that. Um, <laughs> no, you know, those, those are typically the big three, like the Maxi Aids and the Amazon and APH. Okay. Yeah. It was it was funny because I started to like think of others and I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole and leave somebody out. Yeah. <laughs> so. I had those as my, those are my top three. So I'm like, all right, well, we'll just stop at three. Yeah, well, and Hobby Lobby. Are... You got to love Hobby Lobby. For oh, tech, yeah. paper and all that. But yes. Exactly. Too, right. For some of that low tech stuff. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. You know, think about how can you, again, creatively 
acquire some of that stuff. And I think that's a that's a really good mm -hmm. a good point, Amy. That idea. That's what makes Amazon so good for some of this because it's it, you might be able to get things that are not necessarily marketed as tools for people with disabilities, but it's the it's the pieces you need in order to make something. For mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that they give you some nice options there. So and the dollar store. Yeah. <laughs> the dollar store. Oh, don't even I can go down that rabbit hole for hours. The yeah. dollar store, of course. But Never it is finished. a lot of those tactile graphics is, ends up being things that we make in the moment. So then it, it really mirrors exactly the paper that the students given. Right. Too. Like so. Good point. Paige, can yeah. I put you on the spot? <laughs> yeah. oh. sure, go ahead. What's the okay. question? So no, just as a user of things, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, just either different assistive technologies or? Um, I think honestly, the internships really kind of shown me a bunch of things. And it's like, you're looking at little pieces like, they have like a APH has like a tactile uh, map of the US, right? I never knew that was a thing. Like I'm I'm finding out about all these little things and I'm like, where was this? I needed like even little apps for OM. I'm learning about all these things. And I'm like, where was all this when I was a student? But it just keeps kind of revolving and it's crazy. Yeah. Great it does. It's, it's really it's neat point. to think back. Like I feel like, you know, I don't know, I was thinking of this today. So I've been, you know, doing it for 15 years now and just even how things have changed from Kind of when you first start as a out as a teacher yeah. and there's it's exciting that there's always something new but then there's always <laughs> something new the new right exactly so, let's see emily had you had a question i might have cut you off i was just curious we get a ton of questions about bookshare and the apps that you can use with bookshare so mm -hmm. you said dolphin easy reader and braille buzz are two of the ones that you use most with bookshare so not Braille Buzz with Bookshare. So Dolphin Easy Reader um, is the one that I end up using the most with my students just because that's uh, the one that I feel like is, not you want to say easiest, but most intuitive for what we're kind of doing. Uh, Bookshare came out with their own new app. Was that just last year? Um, so I downloaded that onto my students' iPad, but we just kept going back to Dolphin Easy Reader. Um, Voice Dream Reader is another one. What else am I missing? I, I'm a I'm a user of Dolphin Easy Reader because of for the exact reasons you just said. It is easy to get your bookshare books. It's one of those apps that is very rich in features. It ha it does a lot. And awesome. it's free. And, awesome. and so why, you know, why um yeah. why try well, we something get, different? I was just gonna say we get questions about that. So whatever this most streamlined and free is the best. So thank you. Yeah, free is great, and and again, it it's so it has so much flexibility, um, in it. And and one of the things I really find that my students use a lot, and I didn't expect them to, because I gave it to them strictly as a Bookshare app to read their Bookshare books. Um, but there's an option in there that if you go to any web page or any other page on your device and copy text to the clipboard, you can drop it into Easy Reader, and it will read it. So it will read any text from your clipboard. I didn't know that. So there That's you awesome. go. It makes that app even better <laughs> somehow, everybody, right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, so a browser, anything else, as long as you can copy the text onto the clipboard. So hold your finger and copy it like you would on an iPad. You can go into Dolphin Easy Reader and there is, it says, I think it says my clipboard texts, I think okay. is what it says. And then you just paste it in there and it just goes. Look, that's now I'm awesome. looking at it on my iPad because I want to give you the right thing of what it's called. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But it, it, and it's one of those features I didn't rush to show students. Yeah, my clipboard texts is what it's called. And then you just paste it in. Cool. There. Um, that's I didn't awesome. show them. And then I had a student show me. They're like, do you know you can do this? I'm like, yeah, I didn't think you would need to do that. Oh, this is great. Awesome. So there awesome. you go. More features of a free tool. Even better. And then does it change to like whatever they made their visual settings? Yes. That's so awesome. it, all those settings you have follow you into that. Yeah. And it gives you all of that in there. Very so cool. It is nice. So it's really, and and again, I, I, a couple of students using that as a tool for note collection. So they're copying text as they go and dropping it into the same document and then listening to that, which is in essence their notes that they're using at that point. 
Cool. Kind of a cool way to use it. So yeah, that's great. Another use for those free apps. You gotta love it. So. Yeah. Very good. Let's see anybody Absolutely. else? Any other thoughts? Adrian, this was fantastic. Thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. Like I said before, um, I'm going to remind you one more time, just because now I have the page actually up. I'll share my screen. Uh, please, since you are all local, I would invite you. You have now been personally invited. And anybody who's watching the recording, you've been personally invited too. Join us for our AT Expo, which will be at the DOE building on May 16th. We'll be there from 11 to 4. We have bunches of vendors already confirmed. Here's the list of uh, 20 vendors that are confirmed already. Uh, and we're hoping to get even more as we go. We're going to have some small presentations from the vendors. So they'll be sharing some uh, spotlight sessions on the work that they do, the, the equipment they provide or the service they provide, whatever it might be. Uh, so please Keep up for more information. Go to our website for that. I will drop it in the chat one more time for everybody who's here. Uh, you can visit that on our website, which is nhatconnect.com. Search for the ATX bell. So hopefully we will see you all there. Thank you. And thank you for everybody all else. Right, well, thank thank you. you. Have a great rest of the afternoon, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.